Hello, you're watching BTVA's Business Nigeria for today, Thursday, December 10th, and I am Tunji Andrews. Now on our radar today, we look at regulating the Nigerian informal sector and also the 2016 that is to come when par tariff hike uh, is hiked. When we return, all of these and more in the next 30 minutes. Do stay with us. This is Business Nigeria. Welcome back. Quick look at the business news making the rounds today. Michael would be giving us uh, those stories. Thank you very much, Sunji. And for the stories making headlines today, the Nigerian Senate will engage the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, on the opening of a special window for petroleum marketers to access foreign exchange. Now, this has been a major challenge for the marketers. The adoption of this could ease ongoing fuel scarcity across the country. The PZ Cousins PLC blames the Nigerian operating environment for its slowing performance. Now, that is according to Reuters. The company also predicted that performance in certain categories in Nigeria in the second half is likely to continue to be affected by ongoing squeeze on consumer disposable income. Now, that's it on the top stories on business for today. Over to you now, Tunji. Well, thanks, Michael. Nigeria's informal sector is estimated to account for about 64% of the nation's GDP, a figure which is bound to increase on the back of, uh, of the rise in job losses in the formal sector. A natural need to turn to the grassroots culture phenomenon of informal trades in the most popular city in Nigeria. Money changes hands on a daily basis via deals and trades, but this is unrecorded and untaxed. I spoke to Dr. Yemi Kale, the Statistician General of the Federation, earlier, and he had some input on what should be done in that sector. Do take a look at this. Many are jobs in Nigeria that are making some income. A lot of, well, they're making very little income, but, but because there are so many of them, yeah. um, about 80% of those in the micro, uh, in micro of, of our labor force are in micro, micro businesses. businesses yeah. 98% of them do not they not pay taxes. taxes. But they are getting little sums of money. But at the end of the day, when you add it up, it comes to a huge amount. So what can you do to get these people into, into the, What yeah. incentives can you give them? I'll give you an example. You can imagine what we call house helps in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Uh, it is considered a menial job. It's considered something that uh, is embarrassing or disgraceful. In other developed countries, these are jobs that are people are well paid for doing. Uh, I think a policy that protects such people develops yeah. them um, make sure they don't uh, get, sure get minimum, abused. Mini, yeah. They get abused. They get a minimum. They're not exploited. It's properly. Uh, maybe, maybe they, they might. They, they might even be more willing to uh, pay taxes because the government is now protecting them, ensuring some minimum standard, exactly. minimum income for them. That way, you can get a huge number of uh, domestic help coming all over the country the coming net. to the tax net, and in the process, they themselves are better treated. They won't be taken ad advantage of by their employees. The employees have standards and guidelines to, on, in hiring them and engaging them and so on. And th I think for, they will be happy to pay some little percentage of their income mm. because they are properly taken care of. Yeah. Um, so rather than dismissing all these jobs, as same thing with all the many plumbers and electricians, we all call to our houses, we pay them cash in our, in our, in our houses when they are done. Mm. But if you can't get a situation where they are well protected, there's a policy that guides them and pulls them together, uh, you have one way or the other gotten them into, into the formal yeah, system yeah. and then the government can. So I think we should be looking at things like that, not necessarily trying to increase the, the, taxes, the taxes of those that are already. Okay. Um, now I'm joined in the studio uh, by BTVA's head of research, Adibuiga Ola today and Oluatosi Ola Sainde to speak about um, the informal sector basically and how we can change those jobs into, or those, that sector basically into a formal sector. Now, um, guys, the, the basic bag, backdrop of what makes um, a, a trader or someone who is actively involved in the economy of Nigeria takes him from being informal to formal is the fact that he pays taxes. And we, we heard, uh, you heard uh, Dr. Khaled talk about the fact that, you know, some of the menial jobs we have in Nigeria, if the people could just be a bit more uh, regulated, the government steps in, uh, that could increase taxes and also help us be able to adequately capture those people in GDP cal uh, calculations in a better stance. But 
The question is, do you think those people will be ready to actually come into the tax net? Basically, what makes it the informal sector is the fact that the cost of registering the business or making that business process legal is difficult in Nigeria. Now, let, let's just use a typical example. I have someone who comes to do my wife's hair at home. She doesn't have an office, she just comes. And she probably does that for 10 to 15 or 20 people. How do you tax that type of individual? I think the point of this is that now we're asking, let's just create a structure around it. For instance, in South Africa, they have a system that regulates the domestic workers, people that help families, and they also have a minimum wage for that. So now they feel the government is on their side, protecting them by creating a minimum wage, and they also, they've formed a body. If we can have subtle policies like that, that is in their interest, and we're also benefiting from it, so that way it's not yeah, a zero sum. The, the, the thing is incentive at the end yeah. of the day, because if the government can make them understand that if you come under this umbrella body, you would be able to um, have a minimum wage if you have um, abuse issues or people have refused to pay you there's a there's a there's a legal way to which you can get that money justice, back or, we, you know we typically do that first of all we cost the justice in Nigeria first of all is very very slow secondly um, part of the reason why it's such a huge informal sector is entrepreneurial the entrepreneurial spirit the average Nigerian has now first of all you have difficulties in setting up a business right if you were to look at how much tax hours it costs you to set up a business in Nigeria it is about 940 hours compare that to Burkina Faso so that's about 140 hours. So you're looking at it in terms of, one, how long it takes me to set up these formal structures, two, incidences of multiple levels of taxation. Now, look at bus drivers, for instance. You, you say that bus drivers are not taxed. Yeah. But guess what? They pay at yeah. bureaus and they pay different people. Mm -hmm. They'll pay local governments. They pay different people. Just, isn't, so, that, isn't that something for Mr. Fowler to be concerned about now exactly. that he's... Um, yes, and I think they can also look for creative ways of doing it. For instance, like the Lagos Homes, you know that I need to be paying a tax for me to apply for that. Look for subtle ways. Create a system whereas they will need a tax form anyway to achieve it. To and achieve exactly. Those, yeah. So we just have to look for how we can achieve that, basically. And 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 then the people that are, are not in the tax that they, they have a wide amount. I mean, Dr. Kale spoke about the fact that it it could they, 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 sometimes it looks like it's very little amount. But, volume but if you it aggregate yeah. it on a larger sector, it's something that you but know. But part of it also takes part of it also takes reorientation because um, because it's the informal sector and the people you have who are likely going to be involved in tax collection and tax identification will likely be um, normal, educated people like you and I. There's also um, sort, some sort of mental disconnect that you have when you're relating to a mechanic or when you're relating to... There's a difference, despite yeah. the fact that it's tax. And there are also, for some of these remote areas... But I mean, I, yeah, Tosu, we were talking difference. earlier about okay. the fact that uh, some parts of the world Prostitution is calculated in GDP. Yes. Uh, some drug-related activities is calculated in, in GDP, GDP in some countries in the world. So it, it just just show that the, the government has been able to be broad enough to be able to capture those issues. Now, what we're talking about is that there are so many illegal activities that happen in Nigeria that, are, that isn't captured or in GDP. Or, would you want illegal activity? I know the, well, the, the, the I, law it, says it is that true. it's not it captured. Is true. But you want it to be captured, focus though. at this point, honestly, would be that you get the people who are doing legal activities in Nigeria that are not taxed. A lot of issues that you have, with, particularly with taxation in Nigeria is I believe it's I, I don't want to say it's outright evasion but it's it's some sort of avoidance but what about those guys who are doing good businesses have five six seven employees still evading the tax uh, officials and hiding from how about this Almost every Nigerian are very big on family. Mm -hmm. And many people cannot afford, afford a private schools. How about all the people going to public school? How about you make it a requirement that before you re enroll your child, let there be a little paper or something tax that shows that you're working. Something like that. That is where you incorporate it. They, they are sort of obligated to get themselves into the system. We just have to go back to the drawing board and look for the actions that get the most critical um, I, I, objective. Anyway, I think uh, Fowler is probably one of the right people to, to, to be, the right person to be there, because I do remember that when he was on top of uh, LIRS, LIRS. There, LIRS. There, there, were, there were so many yeah. things. Yeah. If yeah. your car was impounded by LASMA, you needed the tax clearance to be able to get, get your it. car out. So many things, and that really got a lot of people into the tax net. So, uh, and that is one of the things we're hoping, especially as we go into 2016, that that, um, uh, as we're looking for more money for the, the budget, we hope to expand the tax net and capture a lot more people in that. Uh, Tosi and Boyega will still be with us, but uh, uh, we'll be going on a short break. But before that, Business Nigeria will be back in a bit when we talk uh, to Jubril Karim uh, from Echo Bank Research on tariff hikes uh, in Nigeria's power sector. Do stay with us. This is Business Nigeria.
According to the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Baba Tude Raji Fasola, the surest way not to have power is to oppose the implementation of the tariff order, uh, the multi-year tariff order, which will be spread over a number of years, so we do not feel the impact at once. However, it's also uh, the only way to encourage investors into the business and to make the business of power profitable. Oluwatosi Olasende spoke to Ernest Edgar, Benin Electricity Distribution uh, Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer, and he supports this. This is what he had to say. We are not pricing electricity correctly. We are also talking of getting a cost-reflective pricing because self-generation today, as we know, cost each person about 80 to 90 naira per kilowatt hour. What are we charging the common man on the street? As low as 13 naira, as low as 14 naira, 82 kobo. And what are we always saying? We always say, give us the opportunity to increase the per kilowatt hour. Let it come to a level whereby we are able to substitute your alternative source of power, which is self-generation, and then you pay a bit of premium to ensure that the entire system survives. So that's in terms of price. Now let's talk tariffs and building the power infrastructure with Jubil Karim, power analyst at Ecobank Capital. And still here with me is BTVA's head of research, Adibuega Olatide, and senior researcher, Oluatosi Olasende. Welcome to the show, guys. Um, now, Jubil, um, Ghana recently upped uh, their tariffs by 59%. And, um, and basically the idea was if we are able to make this a lot more competitive, investors will see uh, a value and be able to come in. And at least they'll be able to see the, the trajectory to which they can pull out their money. One of the issues we've had with the Nigerian power sector is that investors can't see value as it is right now. Do you think it makes sense to increase our tariffs and how much do you think we should increase it by? Okay. Um, if you're looking at uh, the current tariff system in Nigeria, it's simply not cost reflective. And what I mean by cost is, if you look at the whole entire component of what makes up uh, the power that has been delivered to the, cons uh, to the customer, we have the foiling part of it, which is the gas, then we have the generation, we have mm -hmm. the transmission and the distribution. If we look at from the generation, tra transmission still with the government, we are look at generation and distribution. Even that, with the current tariff, cannot cover the current tariff cannot cover the cost of distribution yeah. and generation, let alone what is the what is foiling the whole process, which is the gas process. So, then again, that is affecting how much is being invested in the gas. Uh, in the gas sector itself, mm -hmm. because if the tariff is simply not cost reflect, uh, reflective and uh, gas uh, producers are not able to make enough to even cover their own cost how, in, in supplying it, gas, it becomes, uh, a it problem. becomes a problem. Bega, um, I, okay, I think I should ask Tosi though, because um, it, 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 I, was, I was doing a bit of an analysis with someone and he was saying that if we increase our tariffs by 70%, it will go up to about 42 naira per kilowatt. Do, what, and you've seen the way Nigerians are very emotional about such uh, fees. We, we saw what happened with uh, uh, Occupy Nigeria with the subsidy issue. What kind of reaction do you expect Nigerians will have to an increase in tariffs? Okay, let me quickly latch, in, about, latch on to what happened with the subsidy. Many a time people were ignorant about it, and I think we need to bring the numbers to them. The average cost is about 27 per kilo, kilowatt per hour. However, if the people were to generate the power themselves is about 90 kilowatt per hour, 90 naira per kWh, per yeah. exactly. So now the question is, why do you want to be paying so much if this cost is not cost reflective? Why don't they raise it up a bit? I use my generator less. You use your generator. 80% of the consumers of electricity are residential people, like there's mm. you and I for our for Karen, for but what, what's purpose. happening with the gas situation? I mean, that's another part of the issue, right? Because we're yes. talking about gas cost uh, and not reflective and the gas people are saying we need to increase our prices also okay uh, so if you look at it with the current system the government simply the regulator simply fixed the gas of uh, the price uh, the gas price being supplied to the power producer and what that means is that the price of gas in Nigeria is not 
a reflection of what is happening in the international market. And what that means is that if you are producing gas in Nigeria, you have to make sure that you are producing at a level which can, uh, which can mm. get mm. some return for you with the current pricing system. But if we allow the price to go up a bit, then we can attract investments. I mean, you need... Gas simply doesn't come to the surface and you put it in a pipeline. Exactly. And the the so. pipeline itself costs something. Then you have the gas processing facility that needs to be installed. All this investment, need, you have to have a good tariff system, a good uh, price for the gas mm -hmm. for me to uh, come up with that kind of investment. And that is a major drawback for the Nigerian, for the Nigerian gas industry. Wait, yeah, I mean, we're talking, I mean, everything doesn't look good right now. We're talking costs in terms of uh, uh, gas. Uh, the the uh, power generators are saying it's not cost effective for us to produce at this particular rate. We can't get investors. We want to wrap up capacity. I mean, uh, and the cost consumers are saying we are not getting power. It's already too expensive. I mean, wh 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 what's the out what was the outweigh from all of this? Now I'm going to look at it from the point of a consumer. Now my power bill went from about seven thousand naira to about twenty thousand naira. Now the question is, did my consumption increase at that point in time? No. So when I did have these discussions with um, Ikeja EDC officials, sorry, Eco Distribution officials, right, the question was, oh, yes, but haven't I seen that? There's been lights. And I'm like, but most of the time, I'm not home to enjoy it. But so, that obviously means you don't use a prepaid meter, right? No, I don't, I, I, I don't use a prepaid meter. Okay. But aside that, my own argument for the whole, for the whole oh, um, consumption has, your, sorry, production has increased, so you have more stable power, is this. If I were to run my gen for 24 hours, I probably would use the same amount mm. as the bill that I was charged. So what's the difference? You talking, um, okay. I, I think if you, if you have to look at it that way, that's not a good comparison. No, I said from the, I, I said from the consumer perspective. Yes. And I'm talking about the retail consumer, not the commercial consumer, yeah. obviously. If, if you, even if you're a retail consumer and you're looking at it, if you look at the cost, if you, have, if you can break it down to the cost, it, uh, the, uh, our the, power, the distribution company is uh, billing you for using electricity and you compare that to what you are using to fuel your gen, it is simply not comparable, regardless of even if the tariff is increased by 100% today as we speak, you you'll still, still be, be spend, less. spending less. I would still be spending, spending less. less. Yes. So, and you talk about your uh, your bill going up. Uh, you are, apparently you are part of the what we call the estimated billing estimated uh, system. system. So, which means that. You, well, first of all, you don't have a prepaid meter. Second, you are not even being paid. I had built. a prepaid one actually that went awry at Bega, some point. Bega, yeah. stop, but, stop arguing. Stop but fighting. But stop I think, I think also, <laughs> I think okay. it's very so, hard to have this conversation without also talking about the, the, the meter system because yeah. everybody exactly. keeps yes. talking yeah. about. And it's a good thing that the new um, uh, minister for power now has said that they are going to make sure that uh, the local producers for, uh, for Take, the meters uh, giving priority. they are giving priority. So we are going to see much uh, distribution. But one factor that we have to look at it is government in Appearance. Remember that, that earlier in the year, the Senate actually put a stop to the uh, fixed charge that has been collected by the distribution company. And that is part of what the fixed charge is meant to cover, cost of all these equipment. Jubilo, now, I was, I was looking at something now, um, a breakdown of that tariff, that tariff, particularly when they reviewed the tariff structure, a breakdown of the components of what forms the tariff, uh, things like your inflation rates, things like yes. your gas prices, things like your exchange rates. Yes, now sir. you have a devaluation that okay. is likely going to come in at some point in time. So that and the fact that these rates are capped by exactly. NRC. So that almost automatically means that if you allow your rates without some sort of regulation, then obviously your power consumption might not go up, but definitely the amount you're paying per kilowatt hour is going to go up at some yes, point definitely. in time. Because if you look at it, what, uh, what is the cost? At what, with what currency is the cost being incurred by this company? It's dollars. It's in dollars because all the equipment are imported. The gas is being paid for in dollars. dollars. So you cannot expect the, company, the companies to, who are already making a very small margin costs. to be absorbing the cost. They have to pass it on to their final consumer. And we are no more in the days where government is subsidizing everything for consumers. So you just have to pay more for what you're receiving. But, and but, also to consolidate on that, actually, NEC is mandated by the electric power sector reform to set tariffs that is reflective of cost. And, mm -hmm. if, if, and if they do not raise it, in actual fact, they, will be, they, will be, um, they wouldn't be complying Jibrilo, with that law. Um, the the uh, MD of TCN recently came out to talk about the fact that they needed about $1 billion every year. For the next to, five years. the next five years to increase. I think, is it the next five years? For okay, the next, next five, five years. years to increase uh, power transmission. capacity, transmission to yeah. about 20,000 uh, 20, megawatts. megawatts. Yes. At, I mean, that's just the TCN angle. Okay. Jenko um, Disco, what kind of investment should we be looking at? Okay, for the TCN, let's look at it this way. 
a lot of investment that Nigeria has been making in the power sector over the years, from the Obasanjo administration down to the last administration, even currently, is being focused on power generation. A lot of this administration has ignored the transmission sector. Oh, of it. Central, so yeah. while a lot of uh, investment has been made in generation, so we won't require so much when it comes to uh, generation and distribution because, well, investment we has already gone into so yeah, But for transmission, you have to because you have you have a current system that can take more than four thousand four five thousand at max yeah. megawatts and you have uh, you want a ten thousand megawatts in the next five years. So you have to have this huge investment into that because area. this totally revamping the old system. You, you have to, not just investment, you have to invest wisely. You have to look at which mm. best way to transmit. So now power. we have a new minister, 2016, what do you see for power, rates, tariffs, I mean generation, as that sector as a whole, what do you see for that sector? So one thing you should be very glad uh -huh. about is that we are, this is not a, a period where there is an election in the following year that the power um, minister is afraid of saying certain things. This is a period where we just have a new administration. So people are assessing things based on uh, the merits of the situation, not on looking to the masses for, for support, so, yeah. which is the reason why the power minister could actually make this kind of statement about tariff going up. And I think that's what we should be looking at. Tariff will definitely go up, but then investment in the power sector will also increase uh, uh, as well. If, and if you look at the person of Babatunde Raji Fashola with what it did in Lagos with certain uh, a little uh, power generation stations that they yeah, have yeah, for true. Alausa, the sources of that, if, if you can bring it to the national level, of course we are going to see some uh, very successful period. And I think it, it's beginning to look a much more brighter than what we have seen. So Boyega's electricity bill is going it, to go it, up in 2016, up. Exactly. Uh, most definitely, as Jubriel has said. So we're going to expect more investment in that sector and also possibly higher rates coming from the person, uh, the, the uh, National Elect Electricity Commission. Thank you very much, Jubil, for being with us on the show. Also, Thanks thank you me. very much, uh, uh, Tosi and Buega, for joining us on the desk. And uh, basically, this is uh, the much we can take on the show today. Uh, next week, uh, same time tomorrow, we'll be here giving you premium business coverage on Nigeria's economy and uh, business space as a whole. Till then, keep doing business, Nigeria.